Ed Orgeron has been fired. Yes, this happened. This happened a couple days ago, I know, but I'm just now getting to this topic. I'm not going to mess around with much of an intro, as we're going to get right into today's video, and we're going to talk about different candidates who could be the next head coach for the Tigers. Right before we get into that, though, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed for the upcoming season, and I know we can do better than that, so be sure to hit that button, smash that like button for the algorithm, turn on post notifications, and let me know what topic I can do next. Now let's get started and talk about coaching candidates for LSU. All right, so the first coach we're going to talk about is Luke Fickle. Many of you guys know he played for Ohio State, and eventually he became the interim head coach. Unfortunately, he was not able to keep that, but he was hired by Cincinnati. In his first few years at the Cincinnati program, he has built them into the top group of five school there is. So far, the Bearcats are a playoff contender in 2021, are a top five team, and everything is going spectacular for Fickle. LSU is definitely an upgrade, and I think he has the ability to be a good coach there, but will he leave the Bearcats, who are now headed to the Big 12, for LSU? I don't know. I think he's a legitimate option, but I'm not quite sure. The next guy I want to talk about is Mel Tucker. I absolutely love Mel Tucker. He played for Wisconsin back in the day, was a defensive coordinator for the Bears, and spent time at both Alabama and Georgia. Mel is more than familiar with the SEC, and he has shown in the past he is not afraid to leave for a bigger job. Sorry, Colorado fans. So far in 2021, the Michigan State Spartans are undefeated. Mel Tucker is the leading candidate for Coach of the Year, and I love how he builds the program, as he can both recruit, use the portal, and develop players, and I think he could potentially work at LSU. Will they be able to bring him away from Michigan State, though? Third guy is James Franklin. I think this is far-fetched. He's pretty much linked to every single big job that ever comes up, and it never happens. Penn State is not at the same level as LSU, but they're pretty dang close. Besides the title in 2019, LSU has been a 9-10 win team in the last decade. So is Penn State. Franklin has something good going on there. State College absolutely adores him. And while he does have to play Ohio State every year, leading for the Big Ten West and playing Alabama is arguably harder. Well, I think there's a shot. I don't think it happens. The fourth option I've heard a lot about is Lane Kiffin. I don't understand this. I like Kiffin, I think he's a good coach, and I have nothing against the guy, but I'm tired of every high profile job listing him as a candidate. If LSU wants to be successful, they need to go in a different direction and hire a real up and coming coach, not someone who's been around everywhere. I love the Lane train, and I think he's going to build Ole Miss into a big time program, and it just doesn't make sense for him to switch from Ole Miss to LSU. Tier two are up and coming head coaches who maybe aren't the biggest names in the world, but I think all six of them would do a good job. The first one we're going to talk about is Dave Aranda. He made a name for himself at Wisconsin, but he really started to blow up in 2019 as he had that LSU defense on top of the world. So yeah, Aranda has already been to LSU. What did he do from there? Well, he took the head coaching job at Baylor, and while I will admit he was terrible in his first year there, Baylor has surprised everyone and has been one of the most shocking teams in college football this year. The Bears are now ranked, and it looks like Aranda is a pretty good coach. Would he leave what he's building at Baylor to go back to LSU? I don't know. But I think Aranda is a pretty good option, and I wouldn't be mad at them if they hired him. The second guy is Matt Campbell. While Campbell has fallen off, and it seems he really wants to be at Iowa State, he is worth mentioning. Campbell has built one of the worst Big 12 programs historically into a college football playoff contender. Yeah, they're no longer a contender, but at least at the beginning of the year they were, and they had all the pieces it seemed. Things have fallen off for Matt Campbell in Iowa State this year, and it's been pretty unfortunate. Campbell is still a big time coach, and I think he'd do a great job at LSU, and if he were hired there, I would be really happy, but I'd also be sad because I love Iowa State football. The first one is Jamie Chadwell. He's the head coach at Coastal Carolina, and he has built the Sean Clears program pretty well over the last few years. Sadly, they lost to Appalachian State a couple nights ago, and their undefeated season is over, but they've been one of the best group of five teams over the last two years, and Chadwell is a young and up-and-coming coach, and while I think it would be a stretch for him to jump all the way to LSU, he's definitely a name that I think should at least get an interview. The next guy is going to be a little bit of a shocker. I think Bill O'Brien deserves a shot. O'Brien is not only coached at the collegiate, but also the NFL level. He helped build Penn State out of its toughest time in school history, and had a couple good years with the Texans. Not only does he have the experience at all levels of the game, but he is now a part of the Nick Saban Rehabilitation Coaching Clinic. The Tide have had a good offense this year, and I think O'Brien is a candidate for the job. It wouldn't be the sexiest hire in the world, but I would give it a good grade. The next one is Joe Brady. He is seen as a coaching prodigy who's likely going to get a head coaching job in the NFL at some point, but LSU fans would love to bring him back. He is definitely credited with the development of Joe Burrow in 2019, and Brady was a huge part of that program. 
Unfortunately, Matt Rule took him up and hired him to be with the Panthers, so prying him back to the college world is something I don't know. The reason I say this is far-fetched is because he's not even been an offensive coordinator at the collegiate level, and going from that to the head coach to a program as big as LSU could make him destined for failure, and I would like him to get a little more experience in the NFL or in college before he takes a job, but it's definitely a candidate worth keeping an eye on. Finally, we have probably my favorite group of five coach in the country, Billy Napier. Napier is a huge deal. He has been compared to Nick Saban so far, as he has that same mindset and mentality as him, and he has been all around college football. He spent time at Arizona State, Clemson, and Alabama, and he's now been a head coach at Louisiana for, I believe, four years now, where he's done a great job with that team. I think they've won over 10 games in almost every year, and Louisiana is once again headed towards a great season. Napier's the kind of coach that I think could turn LSU around. He is very familiar with the Louisiana area, and he has turned down multiple Power 5 jobs waiting for the right one. In my opinion, Napier would get an A-plus if he was higher there, but I don't think a lot of people would be happy if he was the guy. Now we get to Tier 3. I haven't seen any of these four guys listed anywhere, and honestly, this is something I came up with on my own, so don't judge me too much for this. The first guy I want to talk about is Brady Hoke. Yes, Brady Hoke. He spent time at Cincinnati, and he was a great coach there before he got the head coaching job at Michigan. After one good year, things really began to fall off for him, as he was eventually fired by the Wolverines. From there, he went over to Tennessee, where he was the head coach for one game, and then he went back down to the group of five level. He's been at San Diego State for a couple of years now, and he's been really good. He's probably one of the least talked about coaches right now, but the Aztecs are ranked, and it always seems they are the best program in the Mountain West. Hoke obviously has experience. Hoke has some experience at all levels of football. He has won wherever he has gone, and I think he could do a potential good job at LSU. But yeah, his time at Michigan wasn't great, and it would not be a very flashy hire, but I think it's at least worth mentioning. The next guy I want to talk about is Jeff Trailer. You probably have no clue who that is, and I wouldn't blame you. He played football at Stephen F. Austin, so he's been in the Texas world his whole life. For a while, he was in the Texas high school football system, but he got his first big college football job at the Texas Longhorns. He was a tight ends coach there, also spent some time at SMU in Arkansas, and was eventually hired just last year to be the head coach at University of Texas San Antonio. More so, that is known as UTSA, and so far, he's done nothing but win. He's one of the best running backs in the country in Sincere McCormick, and his quarterback, Frank Harris, has been awesome. So far in two years, Trailer's gone 14-5, and five, and right now, the Roadrunners are undefeated and ranked. It's not often that UTSA finds themselves ranked, and he was even the Big 12 Recruiter of the Year in 2016. The guy is only 53 years old, so he still has some coaching years ahead of him, and while I would give it a very poor grade if he was hired by LSU, I think Trailer has a decent amount of upside and is someone to keep your eyes on for the next few years. Another dark horse name to throw around is a guy by the name of Jay Norvell. He's currently the head coach at Nevada, but he has traveled around too. He has spent time in both the NFL and college football, as he was with the Colts and Raiders in the NFL, spent time at Wisconsin, Iowa, Iowa State, Nebraska, UCLA, Oklahoma, Texas, and Arizona State in the college world, and he has since got the head coaching job at Nevada. Right now, the Wolfpack are one of the best group of five teams in the country, and with a couple more wins, they're likely going to be ranked, and they are in the thick of it to win the Mountain West. Norvell is one of the best quarterbacks in the country in Carson Strong, and once again, while I don't think that would be the greatest hire in the world, Norvell is a coach who is going to get a Power 5 job soon, and he kind of reminds me of Matt Campbell a little bit. Finally, the last coach we're going to talk about is Kalen DeBoer. He ended up playing at Sioux Falls University, which is not exactly the biggest program in the world, but instead of going to the NFL or being remembered for that, he went straight into coaching. He was in the high school ranks for a bit before he took over as the head coach of his alma mater. From there, he quickly ascended up the coaching ladder. In 2017, he was hired as the offensive coordinator at Fresno State, and after only one year, he took that job at Indiana. What did he do with the Hoosiers? Well, he gave them one of their best offenses in school history and helped turn that program around. As we know, Indiana is one of the worst Power 5 programs ever, and they have fallen off since he left. DeBoer took the head coaching job at Fresno State last year, and despite not having a great record last year, he has turned it around so far this year. Fresno State beat UCLA, and they have spent some time in the polls. He's one of the top up-and-coming coaches in all of college football, and at only 46 years old, he has plenty of coaching time left, and I almost guarantee you, he's going to get a Power 5 head coaching job soon, 
and I think it'll be on the West Coast. So yeah, today we talked about potential candidates who could take the LSU job, and I broke it down in the three tiers. Before you go, be sure to let me know your thoughts on today's video. Who do you think will be the next head coach at LSU? What's going to happen to Orgeron? And who is a name I maybe left off the list? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section, hit that like button if you want to support today's video, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about what has gone wrong for LSU in 2021. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.